I'd like to demonstrate how I go about solving structural problems based on spectroscopic and spectrometric data. Now that we have four different types of spectra that we know how to interpret, let's systematically work through them to find out and determine the structure of an unknown compound. From this data, we almost always start with the mass spectrum. In Chem 203, we're almost never, or at least not very often, going to need to interpret the spectrum itself. Once in a while, we'll ask you to do that, to determine some, something like the presence of a bromine or a chlorine atom. But more often than not, we will provide you with the molecular formula. And that's where to start. From the molecular formula, I always like to calculate the degrees of unsaturation as my first starting point. If I calculate the degrees of unsaturation for this particular formula, I find that it's 5. A number that's greater than 4, greater than or equal to 4, usually implies that there's a benzene present. That's not always the case, but it's a pretty good starting point for a large number of degrees of unsaturation. So degrees of unsaturation are where I begin with um, structure solution. Then I move to the IR spectrum, and I look for the telltale signs of a few specific peaks that are distinguishable in the IR. The first thing I see here is a peak at 1690 wave numbers. That's very strong. That in indicates to me that there's a CO double bond present in this molecule. I also see some weaker bonds well, close to 1600. That indicates to me that CC bonds are probably present. Because we had CC bonds in the, um, or because we had several degrees of unsaturation, that makes some sense as well. I also see some CH bonds but those are present in almost all molecules, so I'm not terribly concerned about them. I notably don't have any triple bonds, and I don't have any OH, NH, or um, special kinds of CH bonds, like alkynes. Then I move to the C13 and MR spectrum, and basically just count the number of types of carbons that are present. Um, and if there's some special information about them, um, I may be able to notice that as well. Way out here at 200 is an sp2 carbon bonded to oxygen, a carbonyl group. That corroborates the IR spectrum that showed us a carbonyl group at 1690. Then here, I have four peaks. It's kind of hard to distinguish the two that are super close together on the, the right. But there are four peaks here, all in the aromatic region of the sp2 region of the spectrum. That probably implies, nice and strongly, that I've got a benzene ring that's, at that's attached to something. Then I notice that I have two types of sp3 carbons. One that's very far to the right with a low chemical shift. That's pretty far from any electroneg electronegative atoms. And one that's a little further to the left, closer to some electronegative atoms. Then finally, we move to the NMR spectrum, the proton NMR spectrum. This is where we get a lot of information. The first thing I look for are the number of peaks that are present. So here I see one, two, three, four, five peaks. That means I have five distinct types of hydrogen atoms. The chemical shifts tell me something. Between seven and eight are hydrogens attached to aromatic rings. Um, I have some sp3 carbons, or sp hydrogens attached to sp3 carbons here. 
and uh, so those are the dis one of those sets of hydrogens the one close to three parts per million is a little closer to some electronegative atoms then I look at the integrations they're represented by these s curves over each of the peaks and the heights of those s curves represent the number of hydrogens present for those peaks. So I have a 2h peak, a 1h peak, really quite close to another 2h peak, a 2h, and a 3h. 99% of the time will provide you with the num number of hydrogens that are um, present for a particular peak. We'll provide you the integration values. Then finally, it's time to look at the multiplets that I see in the spectrum, the coupling. So I've blown up the uh, peaks in the sp3 region of the spectrum, and I see that they're a triplet and a quartet with equal spacings between the lines. So the j values are equal. A triplet that represents three hydrogens and a quartet that represents four hydrogen sorry a quartet that represents two hydrogens is very telling of an ethyl group it's a very distinct pattern that we often see and then the aromatic region I don't need to worry too much about the aromatic region because I see five hydrogens are there. I don't need to worry about the coupling constant or the coupling uh, multiplicities of those peaks, at least yet. Based on the presence of these fragments that I've identified from uh, my spectra, I know I have a benzene ring that's attached to something. I have a carbonyl group that's somehow attached to the rest of the molecule, and I have an ethyl group. And there's only one way that I can stitch these pieces together, and that's like this. So my molecule is ethyl phenyl ketone. If I was to go further, and um, want to annotate this spectrum, I would label each carbon and hydrogen um, with a letter. The A carbon is sp3 hybridized and close to an electronegative atom. It's that carbon. B is the other sp3 carbon. C is the carbonyl group, and I don't have any way of distinguishing the carbons D, so I'll just group them all together. We can also assign the hydrogens, and here we can get a little bit more detailed. So I'll assign the hydrogens in orange. A and B are these peaks. A is a quartet because it has three neighbors. B is a triplet because it has two neighbors. And then in the aromatic region, these two hydrogens are equivalent to each other. These two hydrogens are equivalent to each other. And E is unique. E I can identify as the small peak because it has only one hydrogen in its integration. It makes sense that it's a triplet because it has two identical neighbors. D, those protons at D have two neighbors each, a neighbor at C and a neighbor at E, so should be a triplet. That means that this peak corresponds to D. And the protons at C have one neighbor each, just the proton at D. So we can annotate our spectrum like this.